Three, two, one. What do you get when you mix cornstarch with water? I see you get blue blood. Get on tight. No matter how you slice it, oh, it worked! Ublek acts like a liquid and a solid. And a dance party. <laughs> and with enough Ublek. I'm not sure if it's going to work. Can we walk on water? Oh, man. This is street science. We're in a place where most great inventions start, the garage. What do you get when you mix cornstarch with water? I say you get oobleck, Kevin. Gesundheit, what do you get when you mix cornstarch with water? I said oobleck, Kevin. That is right, right. My favorite non-Newtonian fluid besides blood and ketchup? <laughs> oobleck. A non-Newtonian fluid is any fluid that doesn't behave like water. And by adding two parts cornstarch to one part water to make oobleck, we create just that. Cornstarch is used in cooking as a thickening agent, but here it creates a sheer thickening fluid or what is often called oobleck. Put pressure on it, and it acts like a solid. Release that pressure, now it acts like a liquid. We're gonna see how it reacts to different forces. Suspension of cornstarch and water, it behaves so interestingly. When all those cornstarch molecules are surrounded by the water, they can slide really, really easily, but as soon as you put a lot of force on them, they lock together, mm -hmm. and it almost becomes a solid. It's very, very cool. I think we should test the limits of this oobleck. I think we should really stress it out. You know, I actually know a guy who has kind of an awesome backyard and has done a lot of this stuff in the past. Okay. Wanna go check it out? Yes, I do. Let's do it. We're getting help from the backyard scientist, Kevin Kohler, best known for his viral videos using his backyard as his lab. From melting cell phones to exploding just about everything. Nice. Kevin's backyard is the perfect spot for testing out Ublek. So this is the backyard scientist's backyard? This is indeed, man. This is Kevin's mad lair, oh, basically. He's, he's actually kind of famous for this backyard, man, and oh, the crazy man. stuff he does here. Let's, let's do some damage to cornstarch. Hey, man. What's up? So uh, we're here to mess around with some Ublek. What do you say? Let's get started. Sweet. We've gathered some of Kevin's friends to help us in our quest. And this is going to require a highly scientific quiver of testing instruments. Our goal with these tools and weapons is to use them on Ublek to find out what kind of forces and stressors make Ublek act like a liquid and which ones make it act like a solid. First up, master swordsman and trainer Guy Hagen is taking on Ublek using a Japanese sword called a katana. The incredibly sharp weapon dates back to the 1400s. Will the impact of its razor-sharp edge cut the oobleck in half like a solid, or just break the balloon and cause the oobleck to pour out like a liquid? Oh, oh it worked! Oh. <laughs> right through, oh, nice. So that was so awesome. Yeah. Well, I think we're gonna have to look to the high speed to see what's really happening. Darren is slowing down time to see exactly what happens when the katana strikes the oobleck. Inside the balloon, the oobleck is not under force and therefore in a liquid state. But as the blade makes contact with the oobleck, it becomes a solid. The blow of the sword causes the cornstarch to collect, but as the force dissipates and the oobleck falls to the ground, it reverts back to a liquid state. This is the process of sheer thickening. A hard force slams micro-sized particles in the fluid together, forming long, rigid chains, which are hard to break. Next up, Ublek versus Chainsaw. Ublek versus Chainsaw. Oh! oh. <laughs> Well, was anybody surprised by that reaction? I thought that would react more like a liquid, but it just seemed solid the whole way. Well, there's a lot of force, and then that balloon did not respond well to the chainsaw. Non-Newtonian fluids like oobleck are now being developed for use in military body armor. As the teeth of the saw cuts into and stresses the oobleck, it turns from a liquid to a protective solid and prevents the saw from breaking through. Caught right into it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, just like tore right into the uh, 
Wow. Into the motor. I hope that wasn't like an heirloom chainsaw. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can always pass down from one yeah. pawn shop to another. Oh, uh, yeah. Slicing the oobleck with a chainsaw and sword transformed it into a solid. But what if we attack the oobleck with a super slim arrow, so all the pressure hits one small point on the balloon? Oobleck versus compound bow and razor-tipped arrows. Any predictions? I think it's just gonna go straight through. It's gonna act like a liquid and it's not gonna affect it at all. Anybody else? I think it's just gonna take the arrow and stop it. Mmm. Grab it and smash it, break it, and then throw it on the ground. I like that idea. All right, let's find out. Ready? Three, two, one. Unlike the broad stroke impact of the chainsaw, which was stopped by the solid oobleck, the high speed and extremely low friction of the arrow allows it to travel easily through the still liquid oobleck. This time it went right through, and we saw the balloon was gone and that oobleck kind of stayed together, but we saw that kind of pit yeah. in the middle. That was a perfect shot. When the arrow strikes the oobleck, it penetrates cleanly through the liquid form without resistance because the arrow point only impacts a tiny amount of surface area on the oobleck, the force isn't enough to transform the liquid into a solid and stop the arrow. <laughs> Next, I've got something even bigger in mind. We're creating the biggest oobleck pool I have ever seen. This requires a 13-ton cement mixer, nine tons of oobleck, and a 25-foot-long pool and there's nothing strong to hold on to if you start to sink. You can see it kind of splitting open as it falls. So the pool of oobleck is ready for human testing. Engineer Nick Householder and Darren are here to oversee the open swim. Or is it sink? That's a big pool of oobleck, man. Dude, that is a massive pool of oobleck. What are you gonna do with it? The reason I'm most excited about today is because the oobleck itself is like a way different substance than we typically work with. All right, let's do it, man. Let's do it. So what will happen when a person runs through this much oobleck? All right, everybody, we have a lot of oobleck here. Nine tons, I believe. I'm not sure if it's going to work, so I'm going to need a human test subject. Uh, Dustin, come on. Yes. Give me a hand. All right. All right. What do you need? Pop your shoes off. Go ahead. Give it a shot, man. Three, two, one. Go for it. So you can see the pressure of the foot striking the surface causes the liquid to thicken enough to support the runner, but the substance will not stay solid for long. Once the runner stops lifting his or her feet, force stops being transferred to the oobleck. And when the particles of cornstarch are no longer squeezed together by force, water fills in the gaps between the particles and the oobleck returns to a more liquid state. It seems the only way not to get stuck or fall through the oobleck is to continue to apply force to the particles. But when we keep the action soft, like slowly putting our hand in it, it flows like a liquid. But hit it hard, and it's solid enough to run across. Yeah. No, 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 you see, you scored on your own goal. Oh, I didn't tell you which no. goal was which, so. You told me the wrong way, Kevin. No matter which way you went was the wrong way, Nick. Ah, uh, of course. So it seems like really fast, percussive movements across it, they just walk across it with ease. But yeah. as soon as you kind of slow down a little bit, you get enveloped in stuff. So far, our foot-deep pool of oobleck can carry the weight of a human. But what if we add even more force and bring in a bike or a pogo stick? Will they cut through or sink? Are we ready for our bicycle? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you and I agree, my friend. So he's got to build up enough speed. But here we go. To go faster, 
he pedals the bike hard, which creates enough downward force to make the liquid behave like a solid. But let's see if entering from a standstill with far less pedaling and speed will change things for our fearless rider. So much for the fancy footwork. Our bicyclist doesn't pedal hard, so there's no downward force to harden the oobleck, and the bike sinks and gets stuck. Oh, no. Now, what if we decrease the surface area of the impact and add about 350 pounds of force with a pogo stick? Will the quick impact of a narrow shaft slice through the liquid like the arrow did, or will it trigger the non-Newtonian fluid to change into a solid? Uh, you got a nice wide base there on the bottom. Yeah, I got like a, maybe a two and a half inch uh, surface area bounce pad here. Yeah. Uh, this is just like a rubber composite. There's about 60 PSI of pressure in here and I'm about 160 pounds. So together it's roughly like 300, 350 pounds a good amount of force. Of force. That, yeah. should, that should hold you. We're hoping so. All right, let's do it. All right. When you see these pogos impact the oobleck in real time, you think that they go all the way down into the oobleck, but they don't. The shaft actually gets stuck just barely beneath the surface because the oobleck hardens and keeps it from going too deep. You see, this is why slow motion is so much fun. You see so much detail on things that you would never see with the naked eye. Oh man, what happened there, Nick? Oh my gosh. So I hit it with way more force than I thought was gonna it was gonna rebound on me, and my knees actually buckled because I expected it to give a little bit more. I think I could hit it again, expecting that, and actually bounce right off the other side, potentially. Awesome, awesome. Let's do it. OK, let's All do right. it. That's why we call it an experiment. Now, anticipating more force from the oobleck, two riders try it this time. Success. The shafts of the pogo sticks penetrate a few inches into the deep oobleck, but as the force increases, the liquid turns solid and pushes back against the pogo sticks, sending the riders back into the air. Once I entered the pool, I definitely had that oh moment where it's, I don't know whether I should let go or hold on for my dear life, and, and thank God I just held on, and, and I, I, you know, I, I walked right through, and it was, it was an incredible rush. Anytime you can talk about science with people who are as much in love with it as we are is, is a good day.